You know, recently on my secondary channel, Rat Night Plays, which you should go subscribe to, I've been doing a series called the RimWorld Witch Hunters 2.0 series, which gave me the idea that maybe we should try playing as the other side, i.e. the witches for some time, so we're going to be playing for 100 days as a witch in RimWorld. Specifically, a fire witch and or fire mage who has some eh, pretty okay stats for the most part. As you might have guessed, first things first, we're cutting down a shit ton of trees so we can try to build ourselves a very small and cozy little cottage, which we did basically all throughout the night before becoming hungry and having to eat some berries. We began working on our cabin, but unfortunately Edith barely made any progress before taking a little snooze on the ground. But that's all right, because the very next day, finally on day one, we would quickly finish up our cabin. It didn't have any flooring yet, but that's okay. We'll get around to that in just a moment. Oh, no, it would appear that Edith has fallen asleep again. Eh, maybe tomorrow. Well, the next day, not only would she have to work on the flooring inside the cabin, but she would also have to work on some tilled soil so we could begin planting plenty of rice so we don't starve to death. Hmm, but what is this? In the rain comes a visitor, a trader of sorts by the name of Sam. Ah, <laughs> don't mind if we do, yoink! You see, Sam here is not a witch or wizard or anything of the sort, but he is going to make for a fine friend by force, of course. Before finally falling asleep on this momentous day, we would build a campfire to cook our meals. Then the very next day, we would begin working on a very small cabin for Sam to stay in once he's enslaved, but we were interrupted by a wild squirrel. As you probably predicted though, this did not work out very well for the squirrel and it was easily defeated by our magical abilities. Shortly thereafter, we would enslave Sam as well and he would now be our designated cleaner and cook. I also decided to take a little bit of time and build some fencing to the front of our base and to the back of our base we built some wooden walls to try and keep predators and enemies out. But of course, speaking of predators, Edith herself is currently a predator as she hunted down a turkey with her magical abilities for us all to enjoy. Just kind of think of it like Thanksgiving. Now some time later as Edith was mining steel, we had a raid from the Red Hawk Barra and this was actually the tribe that Sam came from. Apparently they had sent someone to try and uh, rescue him, I suppose. Obviously though, we couldn't let this happen, so we smashed that bastard with a lot of fire and eventually he fell and we came over, took his gear and stomped his guts out and had a nice little snack. Once our first real raid was over with, we began working on a nice storage area back at the base so we could put all of our things. We would also continue mining out plenty of steel and compacted machinery from the mountain so we could actually build some generators and electronics around the base. Yeah, pal, you heard that right. This isn't your grandfather's witches series. We have electricity here, baby. Something else that we have is a good bit of room for a nice, beautiful dining hall where we could store all of our food and sit down with our slaves as well as fellow witches when they come around and have some dinner. And we also have plenty of buckets of poo, which Sam must dump out by the mountain. I just thought I'd add that in there. Late one evening though, as we were both asleep, we had a raid from the Federation, the Tactical Unit PSI, whatever that means, but uh, it's with someone trying to kill us. That's really all we need to know. Now, because our attacker has advanced technology, we actually decided that Edith would give up one of her weapons and give to Sam. Yes, we are arming our slave to help us. Sam quickly grabbed the weapon and then we both jumped in on this tactical bastard to try and murder him and eventually we ended up doing so in which we would also take his wonderful gear. Ah, uh, all that killing has made us a tiny bit peckish. It was time for us to spend some of Edith's magical ability points, so we ended up unlocking the fireball ability, which is a pretty useful one, I must say. Some time later, we had a transport pod crash, and this person that fell was actually a necromancer, but their skills were pretty dog shit, so I decided to strip them of their clothing. I just really liked their hat, and then I decided to test out the fireball spell, which killed them, and seemed to really piss off their faction. I thought of it more as a mercy killing. Oh well, I suppose it's just yet another enemy in a bucket and or sea of many enemies. For a time though, we would just continue working on our base, a bit of self-improvement if you will. Finally though, our dining hall was complete and Edith decided to celebrate with a massive smoke leaf blunt. Really gotta break it in right, you know what I mean? Later we would have a trade caravan stop in, but this was no normal trade caravan. This was an arcane items collector, meaning that these were witches and wizards. We were finally among plenty of our own kind, and we done a bit of trading with them and ended up buying a fire staff. Well, it's actually a fireball wand, but whatever. But as I sat watching our beautiful colony blossom, I realized it's a bit unhygienic and unethical to have them shitting in outhouses and whatnot and not being able to wash themselves properly 
properly, so we ended up setting up some proper plumbing. Later on, we would have a refugee contact us from nearby, saying that they lost their home in a recent attack, and they would stay with us here for a short period of time and work with us, blah blah blah, you know the drill, so we ended up accepting that, and it turns out that she was a blood mage. Though her skills were extremely lacking, we ended up letting her clean around the base, and eventually we would build her a research table because she did have the best research skill out of all of us. But just like that, my friends, it is finally day 25. We have made it a quarter of the way through, and in typical Rat Knight fashion, we are going to have a custom-made boss battle. Now, since this video is based on my Witch Hunter series on the Let's Play channel, I've decided that every 25 days, the boss in this video is going to be a Witch Hunter. This time around, it is is the galactically famous witch hunter known as Eaton. He has very specialized armor as well as an armor gland and many bionic body parts making it very tough to kill him. But as you all well know, that's not going to stop us in the least from trying to kill him. We started off kind of light, firing random fireballs from our fire wand, and then once that didn't kill him, I shot a massive fireball ability at him, and then that didn't kill him. Yeah, like I mentioned, these witch hunters are extremely resilient. At one point, the battle devolved into a gunfight, at which point I was thinking, that we had the upper hand because we had injured the witch hunter so much, but eventually he actually shot down Edith. Thankfully though she wasn't dead, so Sam would run in, grab her, and take her back to her room while the refugee would rush in and try to kill the witch hunter, which she did. After that, of course, we would then begin tending to many, many wounds as well as trying to put out several forest fires started by our flaming magic, which does apparently seem to be one of the bigger downsides to being a flame mage, but the rain came around around and start putting it out for us so we didn't have to worry too much about it. Everything was hunky-dory. And though it feels as if it's taken an eternity, we finally ended up researching batteries as well, which is going to be wonderful for our energy grid. But then again, it kind of doesn't matter because I don't plan on building gun turrets or anything because we're using magic. But you know what else is extremely magical? Childbirth. And I had no idea that our refugee was apparently about to give birth to her baby. Yes, she is indeed Pargnart, which kind of made me feel bad about sending her into battle with nothing but a club. But I digress. I didn't feel like things were looking very witchy or cottage cozy or anything like that, so I decided to build a beautiful little chess area with a beautiful cottage fireplace, and I think it turned out pretty good. Yes, indeed, the base was truly blooming and blossoming, and it was coming along very nicely, but unfortunately, it was time for our refugee to go back home. Godspeed, madam, to you and your beautiful little hairy baby. Almost as if mourning the loss of a close friend, Edith sat playing chess by herself next to the fire. There, there, Edith. There, there. We built some dirt pathing around the base to ensure proper mobility as we're moving around all day. At one point, we had a wanderer named Lady offering to join us basically for free. There was no threat, no nothing, so of course we quickly accepted, and it wouldn't be too long after that that she arrived. And guess what? It turns out she too had been endowed with magical abilities. She was a shadow. We put her on research duty, but I do love that our colony of one witch is slowly becoming a witch's coven. At some point, of course, I'm going to have to get the proper attire for all the witches that end up joining us, but that'll be later. And as if it were celebrating, Celebrating the new addition to our family as well, the sky blessed us with a beautiful aurora. Late one evening though, we had a quest come up. The empire of this planet apparently had a shuttle that was about to crash. They wanted to crash it here and it was going to be attacked by impids, blah blah blah, we would get a pistol and some shuttle loot, so we accepted. Luckily the shuttle landed not too far from the base on top of some buffalo, so it was a soft landing I guess, but not too long after that the impids arrived as well. Obviously impids already have a genetic ability with fire, but one of them was indeed a fire mage as well. Which obviously means that our fire attacks are not going to do so hot, no pun intended, against these impits because they already have a natural resistance. But of course that wasn't going to stop us from trying. I didn't really care about the Imperials, but I did want that sweet pistol, shuttle loot, and anything that these impids might drop. So of course we tried our best, and at some point we ended up using our guns, because we kinda had to. And though I was shit-talking the Imperials for a moment there, one of them actually ended up taking down Humps, who was the 
leader of this impid squad and he didn't kill him which was perfect for us because we could snake in and capture him. And with that the quest had finally been completed and I must say honestly that that was a lot of work for one shoddy pistol but uh, whatever at least we got another impid who is also a fire mage out of it that we can get to join us so I guess it was worth it. At the moment we have him in ladies bathroom as his prison cell so of course we're going to dig into the mountain and try to build something a bit more decent a bit more secure for him that way he can't escape if he goes berserk and whatnot. And of course we're going to end up smoothing the walls because eventually I'd like to keep this as our permanent prison for anyone else that we capture. Ah my friends but with that being said it has once again been yet another 25 days and we are on day 50 halfway there but that means it is time for yet another boss battle of course. This time around, the boss battle consists of a Federation Witch Hunter. Not only a Federation Witch Hunter who is highly skilled with bionics, yada yada, but also an enslaved Ice Mage. And naturally, as the name would suggest, the Ice Mage is a direct counter to our Fire Mage, so this should be fun. Now, I have to be honest, I wasn't thinking that another mage was really going to be much of a threat, but as they approached, we began trying to shoot a fireball, and they shot a massive ice ball, so it was like a shadow-to-shadow -shadow mirror to mirror situation. Luckily not too long into the battle though we used Lady's shadow strike ability on the ice mage killing him damn near instantly. At one point I used a massive fireball attack against the witch hunter which destroyed the walls to our warehouse where she would then run in and begin trying to steal things before running away. And unfortunately though try try as I might she did eventually end up getting away. I, I just could not stop her. Oh well though the most important thing is that we didn't die even though we had to kill a fellow mage it was too late for him. Our survival for 100 days was much more important than that ice mage's life, unfortunately. Some time later after day 50, though, we would end up having an opportunity for a traditional witch ceremony, something called a dance party. It was a celebration where we would listen to the finest music that the galaxy has to offer, wear the finest clothes, and boogie down with the finest folks. And looks like it ended up being pretty fun as well. Not long after that though, unfortunately, it looks like Sam has decided to rebel against us. I forgot to take away his pistol, unfortunately, but that's okay, Lady could handle this quite easily. Oh, Sam, you poor dumb animal. No, for real, I think Sam is some kind of animal. A cow? A, a, a mule? I'm not sure. Would Sam having rebellious tendencies it really wouldn't hurt if we had another member as quick as possible so we started working on hump's room as well as making some clothing for him so he's not naked then you know that would give him a debuff blah 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 you understand you know how this works we're just trying to convince him to join us with day 75 slowly but surely creeping up upon us i decided that it might be best if we tore down the wooden fencing that we have at the southern part of our base seeing how it gets destroyed every time we get into a battle anyways and replace it with some big wooden walls yes we are a fire mage and yes we are going to burn it down eventually but it should give us some protection at least more than the fences at one point we had some beggars stop by and they were just about to leave because we hadn't gave them any charity before we decided to abduct one of them because we liked his skill set and as for the other one well, but hey, the other guy gets to be part of the team now. Lucky him. Speaking of part of the team, Humps ended up joining us shortly thereafter, which was very exciting. Finally, another mage in our midst. Ah, uh, yes, you know I know I've said it several times throughout this video, but the colony is going swimmingly, and I really love that we're getting more witches, bitches. Everything is going so great. Oh no. Well, it would appear that the Federation has once again sent a good sized raiding party our way. Nothing we can't handle with a little bit of magic, I'm sure. We would immediately begin engaging them with a bit of our flaming magical powers, which done minimal damage for the most part, but did incite them to begin chasing us, where we would of course begin firing upon them with our rifles, and eventually they kind of cornered us back against our base. Now this battle would rage on for quite a while, and mostly consisted of us slowly picking off the Federation soldiers as they came out. At us. Eventually, though, Edith was the last to stand on our side for the most part, and we ended up defeating them. We did it, but sheesh, was that a bit of a close call. While we were tending to our wounded, our prisoner decided to try and break out and go crazy, so we had to teach him a lesson as well. But shooting him in the face after his little tantrum must have really helped him see things clearly, because not too long after that, he ended up joining us. Some time later, the Empire offered us a pistol and a gene pack if we were to take on a bunch of their toxic waste, and we're not worried about the long term so we accepted. Ah, uh, can you smell that? 
Smells like success. Now some time later we ended up sending out our new recruit to do a good bit of trading with the Arcane Fold who are basically the only allies we have. Even though our Coven of Witches is excellent at wielding magic, we still need some actual uh, mortal weapons so we ended up trading the Arcane Fold a few things for a rifle. Back home though things were really heating up as we had two new lovers. It would appear that Humps and Edith have fallen in love. So I ended up making them a beautiful little double bed in Edith's cottage, that way they can make some real magic. <laughs> oh yeah, and I also started extracting the skulls from our fallen enemies to put up around the base as a deterrent to any future enemies, but also to just kind of make us happy. For a time, I just kind of began beautifying our road throughout the base a little bit by adding in some wooden planks, and then we would actually begin on some important shit like defenses. I began building plenty of bear traps as well as some cavalry spike things and stuff like that. Ah, the calm before the storm. Getting a good night's rest in before day 75's attack. Hey, what do you know? Well, would you look at that? Speaking of which, it is now day 75, of course, meaning that there is yet another boss battle, but this time I've done things a teeny tiny bit differently. Thus far, we've had small boss battles with normally one or two attackers, but this time around, I've done an actual squad from the Outlanders that Sam came from. They're pretty pissed, so they sent out a large squad of witch hunters as well as a child who is a mage. Specifically, a lightning mage. I felt that that was important to specify. It doesn't really matter, though, because as you'll see, the child is killed quite quickly, as well as most of the squad members, but they do end up putting up one hell of a fight with flames and bullets flying every which way, but eventually, in the end, we did win. As the foolish outlanders ran away, we reveled in our victory. We were so victorious, it hurt. No, quite literally, it hurt, because at what cost, we ended up losing Lady during the battle, a sacrifice above all others. Yes, yes, very sad indeed, but Lady would want us to carry on. Besides, we have a shit ton work more to do, especially if we're going to prepare for all of us not to die by day 100. Speaking of which, we ended up building an electric stone cutting table. I plan on using a lot of stone for the walls of our base to try and reinforce them. During this time, though, I had some interesting news. Machinto tried to romance Sam, our slave, and the two of them ended up falling in love. A forbidden love. But we ended up hardly having any time to focus on this because not long after that we had a defoliator ship that we're going to deal with in the near future. We actually ended up also having an infestation which had to take top priority here. The cocoons from the infestation would stay dormant but it was right outside our base and I just knew something was going to go wrong so the very next day I sent everyone out and we were going to try to kill them with some fireballs and this kind of ended up working until they started chasing us but we shot them down and then came back and destroyed the cocoons. Just as well as as the toxic waste because the toxic waste was actually the reason that this had happened in the first place so we wanted to get rid of it. Then for a while we would begin putting our primary focus on defenses. We want to ensure that we don't have to make a lot of effort to keep everyone alive for the next few raids and things like that so we began adding some reinforcement to our walls, building more bear traps, cavalry spikes, as well as sandbags and barricades for us to hide behind during battles. Then it was finally time for us to deal with the defoliator's Ship, I sent someone out to begin shooting at it from a distance, expecting mechanoids to come out, but nothing ever happened, so we brought everyone else in and we just started blasting it with magic as well as bullets until it was destroyed. And no mechanoids, but we ended up getting some sweet resources. For a short period of time, I also began reinforcing the northern entrance to our base. Uh, that's about all. <laughs> it didn't take very long at all. But then we had a rejected proposal. Edith apparently proposed to Humps. Humps said no, and then the two of them broke up, right? Which is insane until later on they ended up getting back together. Oh, such a roller coaster. Truly, I, I love it. You know, if the boss battles every 25 days don't rope you into my videos, I surely hope that the relationship drama does. Now, speaking of drama, a little while later, we ended up having a dragon wander into our territory that we would try to tame. Now, this dragon had a 20% chance to attack us when we failed taming. So, you already know this isn't going to go well. 
I honestly just couldn't help myself though, imagine us rolling up to day 100 with this massive dragon, it would be amazing. Something not so amazing though was an infestation, I was super worried about this but luckily it actually wasn't in any of our buildings, it was in a cave directly adjacent to the base. Hey, remember the dragon from earlier? Well, this far, Sam would go out and tame it, and every time he would, I would send the others out with him in case it tried to attack. This time it tried to attack, and the shit really hit the fan. These dragons are no joke. I had tried to trick the dragon into walking through our bear traps, and this didn't really work at all, and eventually it would end up beginning to down many of our members, starting with Edith, and then Humps, and then it would chase us around, we tried to run back to the base and run out, yada yada yada. Eventually though, we had managed to get Edith and Humps back into the base where we could tend to them after the dragon was very damaged. Because of the dragon's injuries, it decided to lie down to try and begin healing, which it was very good at, so we had to quickly run in while it was sleeping and finish it off very quickly, and we ended up doing so, thankfully, and it, it's dead. We ended up cutting it up for food later on. And the biggest part, nobody died. We had an infection or two, but that was fine. They recovered from it quite quickly, and we're good. But in even better news, this time around, Humps decided to propose to Edith instead of the other way around, and she accepted the two of them are going to get married, assuming we survive to 100 days. At one point, we had a massive trade caravan, and I thought that this would be the perfect time since we have some quote-unquote allies around to attack the massive bug infestation to try and kill them, and they ended up chasing us out where the arcane fold mages and witches and wizards would have to take them on for us while we hid inside our base. I'm assuming most of you are not new to RimWorld, but if you are new or if you've never done this before, this is always the perfect option. If you have a trade caravan and you have a massive threat that you need destroyed, you can normally attack it, have it chase you, and then fight the trade caravan. The only downside is when the trade caravans, like members, start to die, the, they begin to hate you, so yeah, pros and cons. But on the bright side, once all of these insectoid bastards are dead and these fires are somewhat put out, or at least manageable and all of the arcane fold people are gone we can rush in and take all the goodies that their compadres drop the goodies that haven't burned up in this massive fire but my dear friends my lovely compadres we have finally done it we have finally made it to 100 days we have survived for 100 days in room world as witches bitches and i am so ever tickled i just i'm so proud of the progress that we've made here but it's time for us to try and destroy every bit of it, as I am spawning in some massive raids that I really don't think we're going to be able to handle. Yes, for the 100th day boss battle, I've spawned in an elemental rift as well as a massive federation raid, just because the federation is so tough, their armor is really tough, and elemental rifts are a huge pain in the ass, so I, I thought it would be fun. And because I already know the outcome of this large battle, I'll just kind of sit here and talk for a moment. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys ever so much for watching this video. Um, sorry it took me quite a while. I haven't had a lot of time with Thanksgiving coming up and stuff like that and my day job. And you know how it is. I am always uh, talking about that stuff on the channel and just how it eats up a lot of time. You know, family time, holidays especially. Um, my day job and stuff like that, but I'm, uh, you know, I'm really happy. I'm very blessed to be able to uh, make these videos for you guys and to try and get them out. And um, you know, it really is an honor uh, to entertain you guys and to do stuff like this that I love, that you love. And so, you know, I just want to say thanks. Um, you guys are amazing. You guys are always amazing. You're so kind, um, very supportive and stuff. And I love you guys. I just want to say thanks. Um, and now that I think about it with Thanksgiving coming up uh, tomorrow for me, <laughs> I guess tomorrow for you guys too. Um, you know, I'm very thankful for you guys, a little corny, <laughs> but I am very thankful and I love you guys, so. And, uh, of course, like I mentioned, uh, this video is basically just based on the Witch Hunter series that I'm doing a Let's Play of on the Let's Play, uh, channel. You can find that in, uh, my channel links, uh, for this channel. Um, I'll try to put the link in the bio of this video if I don't forget as well, or you could just type in Rat Night Plays, uh, on the YouTube search bar. You should be able to find it pretty easy. Um, if you're into the Let's Play style content, that's something I'm doing over there. Uh, it's really fun, you know, it's a lot more relaxed, uh, a lot easier uh, for me. The videos are a lot longer, of course, they're normally over an hour long. Um, and that series is actually based on an original series that i done on this channel when that was the main focus of my content here. So, you know, it's kind of a passion project for me to bring back a series like that and, you know, be, be redoing it basically on a, a new channel with... Um, a few different mods and just you know more knowledge of the game um, 
Speaking of the mods, there's always the mod list in every video description. Um, this one for this video is about the same as the actual Witch Hunter series, except for, I think, some weapons mods and stuff like that that I've added in just for the sheer fun of it. Um, if you guys want to check that out. But uh, once again, thank you guys ever so much for watching. I love you very much, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.